Okay guys, what we have here is a bicycle, well, and a dang old goat and a, let me get that old goat out of the way. Go on goat. Alright, so what we have here is just a kid's bicycle, that's what we use down at the kennel because my kids help me so much. And um, on the post underneath the, the seat, you'll see that there is an apparatus attached and that's called a Springer. You get these from a, a company called Springer USA. Let me move over here so you can get another view of it. Okay, now you see what's going on here is there's just a little lever arm, okay? And with that little lever arm, it goes underneath the, kind of the chain and sprocket area. So when the dog goes to pull, okay, what ends up happening is it's pulling in such a way that the, the, that the center of gravity of the bike is, is being taken advantage of, the low part, you know? So, like when the dog goes to pulling, you notice it doesn't want to pull the bike over. All the, all the pressure is down here. You see, and so this allows you to leash your dog up, okay, and when you leash them up and you're riding, even if they kind of make a little bit of a mistake, then uh, nothing bad happens, you know, okay. So these are, these are what we use anytime we have a dog like a pit bull or somebody's got an old hunting dog or something and they live in the suburbs and they just, you know, they meant to get out and exercise them like they were supposed to. It just takes too much time. Or even people that have a lot of time generally, it's not a bad idea to have one of these stashed away because if you have one of these stashed away, then, you know, on those weeks where you got to work a little bit extra or maybe the weather's bad and you want to knock out some exercise and, you know, very quickly or maybe you don't even feel good, you don't feel like running or going to the dog park, man, these things here are a life saver. So let's get to work. Come on. Okay, guys, first step is, you know, we're just gonna work these proximity drills where we get the dog in the habit of coming up close to the bicycle where this apparatus is attached and sitting quietly, you know? So I'm gonna walk away. Come on, Bella. And I'm gonna walk up using a little bit of a targeting technique here. Give her a treat. Now I'm gonna walk away. Come on. And I'm gonna come back, walk up and have her sit. Good. And I'm gonna walk away. Come on. And we'll walk up and have her, have her sit. Come on. So, now, after I've got my dog, where she'll come over here and she'll sit reliably by the bicycle, then what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to reach down here and I'm going to take the leash that's on the bicycle and I'm going to put it on the dog. I'm going to go back to the sitting position. Okay, now I've just basically switched from the leash that I was using to control the dog on our walks to the leash that's attached to the springer. Okay, now from there, I'm going to tell her, okay, kind of tell her she can get up, and I'm going to switch to this side of the Springer. And all I'm going to do, maybe sometimes I'll do this for a whole day, sometimes it takes 10 minutes, sometimes it takes two or three days. I'm just kind of getting the dog used to this relationship where I'm on this side of the bicycle, and she's on this side of the bicycle, right? We're just on opposite sides of the bike. So I'm bringing her over here. If I can get her to sit, that's fine. If she just wants to stand up, that's fine. This is just an acclimation stage. Okay. So let's move on to the next part. <clears throat> okay guys, now once you've got your dog acclimated to standing beside the, the bicycle or sitting, then you move over to the grass and you start walking the dog. Now this is my son, George, he's only eight years old, uh, but the Springer allows him to use his bicycle to walk the dog. And the dog, even if she tries to pull on the, on the Springer and tries to pull George down, she's not strong enough. You know, George, he's not a real big kid. Uh, you know, he's kind of strong, he's a boy, he's active and stuff, but you know, he doesn't have a lot of mass, so he couldn't hold this dog if this dog really just wanted to take off running if he was holding a traditional leash, right? See, like right there, the dog starts to pull and, and maybe not want to go with him perfectly. He just keeps trucking. Now, we'll do this oftentimes three, four, five days in a row, just walking down the hill and walking up the hill, getting the dog more and more acclimated to being beside the bicycle and moving. Okay, now I'll get on the bicycle and try to give you a, a, a point of view of what it looks like when you're riding a bicycle and the dog's actually moving with the bike. All right, now we've done a good job of acclimating the dog to being close to the bicycle. We've done a good job of acclimating the dog to walking beside the bicycle in the grass. Remember, we did it in the grass at first, just in case you had a major catastrophe that, uh, well, just trust me, falling down in the grass, that's a lot better than falling down on the pavement. I was going to give you a, a point of view deal of what's going on here so you could see what I'm seeing, but I had the wrong kind of mount and uh, I almost killed myself, so we had to come back to this regular camera. All right, so I'm going to try to ride away from the camera and come back and we'll just see how it works. All right, so I'm just going to turn my bicycle, get my pedal ready. I've got the dog in a, basically in a healing position 
We'll give her a treat and say, all right, Bella, come on, let's be safe. Good girl, come on, and I'm going to take off pedaling. Oh, good girl, Bella. I'm going to give her lots of encouragement, make a sweeping turn. Come on, Bella. Oh, good girl. As I come back down the hill, I'm going to use my hand brakes, okay, to control the momentum of the bicycle. I'm going to make another sweeping turn. Come on, Bella. Good girl. Oh, my gosh. What a fine animal. Okay, and you can see she'll start to really enjoy doing this, guys. And I'm telling you what, there's just nothing like this Springer for suburban living with a dog. Come on, Bella, one more time. Good girl. Oh. Now, as you're riding, you'll start to find a real comfortable gear for your dog to run in, you know. All right, and so that takes experimentation. You know, don't overdo it, guys. Be cognizant of how tired your dog is. You start off with some real short runs, you know, preferably in the grass if you could, or if you have a, you know, around here we have these old railroad trails, uh, and they're real soft on the dog's feet. A dog has to build up to this, you know, but once you get them built up to it, gosh, you're just not going to believe how much difference this makes. Out of all the dog training knowledge I could ever impart to you guys, one thing trumps them all, and that's that a tired dog is a good dog. Bottom line, if you have to choose between having all the knowledge I have about dogs or having the ability to exercise your dogs every day, as much as I hate to admit it, you'd just be a lot better off with the ability to exercise your dog a whole bunch every day. So what I'm trying to do is kind of give you a balance of both. All right, so get your dogs going, okay? Get your bicycle, get your Springer, be safe, have fun, and let's get these old pit bulls, you know, let's get them where they're mining good and, and, and so that everybody doesn't think of them as, uh, as, as, as natural born killers. All right, I'll see you guys next week.